Right. Titanium white. Titanium white and mixing white. So mixing white sort of does what it says on the tin. Uh, it's, it will lighten and brighten a colour. It's very much more translucent than your titanium white, which is very opaque, which will pastelise a colour if you put it in with a colour. If you're using just white on its own and you want it to be really opaque and cover up something, you'd use the titanium white. But for this, I just want to slightly lighten that shade. So I'm going to use mixing white for that, so a teeny bit of mixing white in there. So I'm trying to make up that green, which needs a bit more yellow and a bit more gold. Right, I'm going to go in with uh, our techniques that we've done before, using perhaps the wet into wet, and then some perhaps dry uh, brush technique over the top to create some texture. I may also use a sponge, I'm just going to see how I'm going. So I'm just going to put a tiny dash of flow improver in that. And I don't want too much on the brush because I want to use some of this black as it sort of shines through, doesn't it? But rather than really blending, I'm trying to create a bit of texture because you can see the sort of lines and the textures in the back of the bead. If you're doing that in oil, would you have to wait for black to completely dry before you You would, so you could just use acrylic and then oil on top. Okay. You could do exactly the same thing. So I've used lots of different colours to make up this colour because it's very unusual. I'm really sort of trying to follow the textures that I see in the beetle. So that's all my wet into wet techniques. So I'm going to use a bit of the, the black to blend that in slightly and maybe create a bit of texture. This black isn't jet black, it's got brown in it. But you know, soften it, make it look more organic. I'm trying to create these like, tiny little lines of the beetle or the a suggestion of those through my blending. Right, too, dark, too much on my brush. So the wet colour blends into the wet colour. Mm. Yeah. You know, who says you can't use them to cheat a bit and use metallic paints? I mean, you can try and recreate the shimmer using your normal paints, but we've got metallic paints now, so we can use them. They're beautiful. Um, I think it was Brian Sewell who said, oh, metallic paints, so amateurish. But... I think they're fantastic and they're really trendy at the moment. Loads and loads of artists at the Freeze Art Fair are using metallic paints, so, you know. Thanks, Brian Shill. Well, you're, you're not a painter, are you? No, he's so. not. He's an idiot. He speaks peculiarly. He does indeed. What does he know? What's he know? <laughs> right, that's him. Well, that's him. <laughs> We've roasted him. Go on. I'm going to YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry about that. No, I like it. <laughs> hmm? i remember which brush is doing what. So not so much on my brush with the black. I'm going to deposit an awful lot of colour. I'm going to keep this blended, but textured as well at the same time. You know, 
if you weren't blending this, that there would look like there's a huge contrast if you did stripes. It has to be a blended texture, even though it is textured. of the beetle's body. Looks like a sort of city trade drive but buy gold. <laughs> <laughs> the gold is great though and you're very welcome to, well, to try this out. Well I've got Lebanese street scene so with lots of gold in that. Oh yeah. yeah. This gold is particularly lovely, this um, you get uh, oil gold, artist's yeah. acrylics one. Well, you can always put acrylic on a... On you a can, you, yeah, you can, but I would, you, I would not do it on top of the oils, you I'd do it either. underneath the oils, yeah. Only because it might cause the other oils to crack, because okay. it dries so quickly. Okay. So you can see how I'm using my brush on, at the different angles to create this sort of the different textures. You know, last time we were avoiding texture completely, weren't we? This time we're trying to sort of build it yeah. up. Uh, a bit of texture here, which I could probably recreate with my sponge. So I'm going to use this smaller sponge because it's got basically smaller. Uh, more minute textures. I'm going to mix up a slightly lighter colour, I think, with my gold and greens. I'm just going to put a tiny bit of flow improver. Don't want much. And that spray bottle really helps dispense the flow improver. So there we are, slightly moistened sponge, picking up some of that. Let's see if we can create some of these textures here, but still keep them fairly blended in by keeping the colours fairly similar. Is that a sponge on your list, Nikki? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be good for brickwork, wouldn't it? This one's just a watercolour sponge, but you could get a DIY, uh, go to a DIY shop and get a sponge. Mm. Same, they do the same sort of job. Yes, it would be great for brickwork, and it's great for blending in too. It's not just for textures. You can sort of move it along. I'm going to go even golder here. And I'm going to try a bit of dry brush work now with this really gold colour, hoping that this is fairly dry. If, you, if you're not wanting to cre create that flat blended surface that we usually do using our uh, stencil brush or pastel brush straight down, you can just use it on its side. It's really mm. nice to do dry brush work with a bit of texture in it. And stipple. I think we need a bit more of that sponge. I'm going to go for gold again. Keep looking at what you're trying to draw as well, I mean paint. Um, that's very important, isn't it? Observation. Otherwise you start making things up. Yeah, I could go back in with a bit of this to Beautiful. create even more texture. Still. It's a lovely piece. I've become quite fond of him actually over the last <laughs> <laughs> coming round to beetles. <laughs> <laughs> didn't like him when he started. <laughs> no, I think uh, his beautiful colours 
make him a bit more endearing to just being a black yeah. beetle. He was a bit flat and menacing looking, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah, you definitely softened him up. Yeah, see, blended him a yeah. little bit. Texture here. So I'm using my wet into wet blending again for this texture. You could go on all day, couldn't you, blending? Mm -hmm. But then you've got to know when to stop as well. I'm going to do that very fine, bright line across his back, and then I'm going to stop. Right, lovely. There we are. So that was a bit of blending, blending textures using a sponge. Mm using a bit of dry brush blending so that didn't go anywhere near the water. Use a bit of wet and wet blending with the flow improver in it on a colour block background. So, next step is to try it yourself. <laughs>